a checking checking one more thing hang on and we are now live everything appears to be where it needs to be it is friday we have made it to the end of the week a weekend ahead of us has the potential of some showers and thunderstorms taking place doesn't look like a lot toward next week but there is still going to be that potential so outdoor activities might be seeing a bit of a problem for graduation ceremonies and field day things like that and definitely a time to keep up to date on what's going on with lightning especially with anything going on outdoors and remember when thunder roars go indoors time to make certain everybody stays safe out there if you can see lightning or hear thunder you are close enough to be struck remember lightning can strike 30 miles away from its parent thunderstorm we'll talk more about the potential for more storms coming up here in just a little bit i'm chief meteorologist austin onick it is friday night this is news 12's exclusive video weather blog weather overtime so if you have any questions drop them into the comments section we'd love to have you ask uh, anything for what's going on at the Tennessee River Valley. Uh, want to contact us directly, go to WDEF.com slash weather or email us. I'm A-O-N-E-K at WDEF.com. And again, you can find my page here for more details if you'd like to take a look and see what's going on there. We'll take a look at uh, the hurricane season in a little bit and a little bit more with Armed Forces Day coming up tomorrow. We'll take a look at what's going on when it comes to weather where some places around the world where United States service personnel are located. So stay tuned for that. A patriotic way to end the week and to look forward to Armed Forces Day. Thanking Chris Bancroft for review of Old Glory flying in the wind on the grounds of Ray County Middle School and some spotty areas of clouds and sunshine out there, but looking at some uh, nice picture there of our American flag waving in the wind. If you've got pictures to share with us, we'd love to be able to do so. Send them in to us. Drop them to our social media pages. Again, that's what a lot of folks have done. Or just email them to us directly at pictures at WDEF.com. We'd love to have you along for the ride there uh, to show off some of your photographic handiwork. And we've had some very nice pictures over the last several months since I've been here. So please keep up the good work on that. Temperatures today decently below normal for the highs right about normal for the low temperature nowhere near our record high thankfully yet 1962 was a broiler out there with temperatures pushing 100 degrees and a record low that hasn't been broken since about 1976 nothing in the rain gauge and we need the rainfall we are behind for the month and the year and we could definitely use a little bit more if at all possible might be picking up some of that tomorrow again it depends on how things shake out we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little while currently chi memorial stadium camera about 10 minutes before 10 eastern time all traffic moving along at 24 75 without any problems for the commuters via rain or backed up potential there are clouds breaking up on the island cove marina and resort camera so looking pretty good at this time and then also looking toward downtown tonight, AT&T Field lit up. Uh, the game is over with. Uh, it looks like it just came to an end as we're talking about this here. Uh, should be getting to the fireworks display coming up in just a little bit. So we'll see how well that goes coming up here in just a little while. But otherwise, looking at some uh, very nice weather. It's humid. Winds are out of the south. We continue again to see some uh, very mild conditions out there and should be staying that way into the near future so for tonight no problems for travelers out there we'll keep our eyes on what goes on uh, with the fireworks hopefully we'll be able to bring those to you coming up here in just a little bit again for the rest of the weekend could be some problems where it comes to uh, more outdoor activities especially for saturday so definitely want to stay tuned and we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit we did have some showers taking place back to the northwest of dayton up around crossville and eyes 40. we do not have anything like that right now some scattered showers off into western north carolina and beyond that just really not that much going on uh, for right now so definitely seeing the potential for uh, less in the way of rainfall for tonight now tomorrow that's going to be a different story as more showers and thunderstorms begin to advance our direction and that is going to be something that we could uh, be looking at some possible stronger weather but for right now it does not look like a whole lot 
We'll show you the severe weather forecast coming up here in just a little while. Currently, our latest storm system that has been hanging around, it's not been going any place anytime fast. And this is going to be, again, giving us some showers and thunderstorms off toward the coastline area, but not that much happening overall. Uh, most of what we're seeing is going to be leaving the area with this system coming up into later on tonight, which is going to allow the next storm system to roll our direction. This one coming in again through tomorrow, and as it does, that will give us the chance of showers and thunderstorms leaving the area into tomorrow night, and then looking at more potential of high pressure coming our way as we get into the later portions of the weekend and next week. We see some isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms out there, but... Again, excuse me, for right now, not that much to worry about for the time being. We'll time the forecast out for you uh, coming up here in just a little bit. Here's what it looks like into tonight. Again, the clouds breaking up, but they will still be around and about from time to time. Very mild mid-evening and through about 6 o'clock in the morning, back to the west of us. That's where we see that line of storms begin to shape up. It should be moving into and through the area of the Tennessee River Valley by roughly about lunchtime. Uh, some of the computer models really slowing this down, the bulk of them moving it through pretty steadily, so most of that should be gone uh, as we get into the afternoon and evening period of time. And then just speckles of rain showers for Saturday afternoon and evening. After that, cooling off very nice for early Sunday morning. Jacket would not be a bad idea coming up there. Most of the chances of rainfall gone, but as we get into Sunday afternoon, some of the computer models are showing the potential of maybe a thunderstorm or two across northeastern Alabama and back into around northwest Georgia. You can see, again, the potential is very low. I'd say about a 1 in 10 shot at best. So we'll include it in the forecast, but I will tell you right now, confidence is not entirely high depending on how that area of high pressure shapes up for us. For tonight, chance of severe weather well back to our west. Again, some thunderstorms possible as we go toward Friday morning. But then as we get into around tomorrow afternoon, Saturday is where we see the potential of a marginal threat of severe weather shaping up uh, into and around portions just south of Chattanooga. Northeast Alabama, northwest Georgia, that's going to be the key possibility of a problem shaping up there. Uh, for right now, again, doesn't look like a huge threat. Again, we're not talking about moderate or high risk. This is not a severe weather outbreak, but one or two of the storms out there could have damaging winds, large hail, things like that, a non-zero possibility of tornadoes. And then that threat diminishes for Sunday, but northern portions of Georgia and then back into northeastern Alabama, you could see some thunderstorms taking place, but the bulk of the News 12 viewing area just really not seeing too much of anything there. Flash flooding, again, well to our west for tonight. We will see for parts of Saturday a marginal threat for Saturday into Sunday of some showers and some thunderstorms that might bring some brief heavy rainfall to the area and then that heads well on down to our south so really not too much of anything left over there uh, as we get into the rest of the weekend so again chances of rain yes kind of sort of but just really not that much out there for the time being all right let's take a look at the seven day forecast and we'll go ahead and time that out for you because as of right now we should be seeing a couple things taking place again it's been very mild normal for this time of the year roughly about say 80 degrees just around that area so we'll be hovering around that for the next several days then we take off and warm up toward the end of next week maybe a little cooler for friday and here's where it gets kind of interesting because the best possibility of rainfall will be tomorrow armed forces day again thanks to everybody who wears the uniform of our country isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms sunday monday and tuesday not great but still possible so again for graduation ceremonies field day activities, uh, just getting out for a walk around the block. Remember, if you can see lightning or hear thunder, it's time to turn around and head back indoors again and wait 30 minutes until that storm has moved off to make certain you're beyond the range of getting struck by lightning. So again, uh, we're coming up on National Lightning Safety Awareness Week. Stay tuned. We'll bring you more on that. Temperatures again more on the warm side toward the end of the week and then cooling off a little bit with another chance of showers and thunderstorms on Friday. But for the most part, again, not seeing a great deal of problems with heat. 
Warmer, yes, not seeing any 90s at this point in time. And then isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms, and that's really going to be about it as we get into the next few days. So if you have plans for outdoors Saturday through Tuesday, keep them, but keep it tuned to News 12 for more updates on what generally might be coming our direction out there. And again, watching very carefully for that. Armed Forces Day Saturday, good opportunity to say thanks to anybody you know who wears the uniform of our country. My dad, uh, former Army, Kansas Army National Guard, uh, almost retired a full colonel from 24 and a half years. Uh, he always made it a point to shake the hand of anybody he saw wearing the uniform out there and saying thank you from one soldier to another service member. So if that happens out there, be sure to make certain you shake their hands on that. For right now, not seeing <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of winter weather here. Back toward around uh, Belgium and just north into around the areas of the Netherlands, Vocal Air Base, uh, where the 52nd Fighter Wing is stationed 52 degrees mid-early morning right before sunrise on Saturday winds out of the northeast and temperatures back in the uh, lower 50s out there little farther to the well to the east in fact over parts of the Sea of Japan and back to the west around China temperatures in the high 60s to mid 70s on the southern Korean Peninsula at 1030 in the morning on Saturday this is our little sort of halfway half-hearted in its own way tribute to watching what goes on around the world and saying thank you to those who are on the home front and you may have friends or loved ones serving in some of these locations and this is just a smattering of where we take a look at from time to time. Guantanamo Bay, Naval Base, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Decent humidity being in the tropics and back into the lower 80s with a nice north-northwesterly wind out there. Uh, where else can we go tonight? Let's uh, go to Iraq and see what's happening there real quick. Uh, very much on the warmer side from earlier on. Uh, temperatures last night around midnight were still in the 90s around Baghdad. Some thunderstorms around Sulaymaniyah International. Uh, Ankawa, Ankawa, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, mid to upper 70s with thunderstorms there. And 80s around Najaf, Baghdad, and Basra. 70s back toward Al Assad Air Base and back toward Erbil. Temperatures back into the mid 70s or so. Uh, when you're on the home front again and your loved ones are serving from a long ways away, I feel that it helps to know a little bit more about what's going on uh, from your location, wherever you happen to be nearby, and taking a look well out into that area uh, that gives you an idea as to what they may be experiencing out there. So that's why we're featuring weather where the troops are, and we'll continue to do this at various points in time throughout the year. Joint Base Pearl Harbor, Hickam at Oahu, temperatures again, lower 80s. Uh, just toward about sunset, close to that on Friday afternoon. South to southwest winds about 8 and looks like mo partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies there. And again, a big thank you to everybody who serves our country no matter where uh, you happen to be. More on all of this, you can find me on the social media website pages. I'm out there on various locations, also on chess.com and lichess.org if you ever want to hit me up for a game. I'm definitely not a grandmaster, but I do know my way around the chessboard out there. If you're a vacation Bible school teacher, a summer camp counselor, and you'd like to get in some weather information, science for the kids, things like that, and helping kids know more about severe weather, just as much as being in a regular classroom, we'd like to be out in the community and help kids understand more about what it's like to be uh, during, in a severe weather situation and how to protect yourself. So if you'd like to, Go to our Food City Weather in the Classroom program at WDEF.com slash weather. Uh, click on Weather in the Classroom, fill out the information, name, contact details, class level, class size, location. Uh, Schedule-wise, you might suggest a couple of dates. If you're in the morning or in the afternoon, one of us will be able to help out on that. It just depends on what's going on and who needs to cover it at what point in time. So if you'd like to have us there, hit us up on the forecast. We'd love to be able to be out there and talk about what's going on and be able to give you an idea as to uh, what might be happening with anything involving severe weather and especially making sure that you are getting ready to go when it comes to severe weather status out there. Again, going into the weekend, we should be seeing the potential of some thunderstorms. We showed you that severe weather threat 
earlier. Meteorologist Todd Heislip will be on duty this weekend, keeping you updated as to what goes on with the potential of stronger storms. Uh, otherwise, he'll be joining you at 11 o'clock Saturday night and Sunday night, so definitely want to stay tuned for his forecast. And, of course, Chip Chapman will be back with his forecast coming up bright and early on Monday morning, starting at 5 a.m. on the morning show. Questions, concerns, ideas, again, hit us up, wdef.com slash weather. And, of course, stay tuned for more on air with News 12 as we keep you updated uh, throughout the rest of the weekend. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. You've been watching News 12 exclusive video weather blog weather overtime. It's just past 10 o'clock on Friday night Eastern time and we'll have more on the 11 o'clock show tonight so stay tuned for an update there and also more details through the weekend again WDEF.com. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a happy and safe weekend and we'll see you back here for another update on weather overtime coming up Monday evening. Until then keep it tuned to News 12 on air and online. Thanks for joining us.